Uh, in the original draft, it was approximately $118 uh, for a permit uh, for anything out over 400 square feet, and now that's been raised to 1,500 square feet of disturbed area. So we changed the definition from um, uh, building area of square footage to disturbed area, and then raised it double the 750 up to uh, 1,500 square foot. So in, in practical terms, uh, anything under 1,500 square feet that, that comes in a construction project would be charged the $25 fee to process and do essentially one inspection on the site. I, I understand, but now we are trying to regulate gardens. Uh, that, that's the second part. I, I was trying to get my hand up, and I, I apologize for interrupting. But um, under uh, 101 Interpretation B, it states that excessive quantities of soil may erode from areas undergoing development for certain non-agricultural uses, including but not limited to construction, et cetera, et cetera. So the intent here of the ordinance is to regulate the erosion and sedimentation coming from construction areas. And we're clearly defining under interpretation that uh, those are non-agricultural uses. So I, 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 what I'm saying is, from an enforcement standpoint, we're not going to be going after gardens. Trustee Jeffrey. My um, point on this, and thank you, Trustee Owen, Trustee Bowen, for saying this. Um, I can't support this even tonight the way it's written. Um, I, I can't tell people where they can and cannot do a garden at them or how they can do their garden. I just can't support this. Well, I hope that, that it cleared it up that uh, if you look at 101B, it's, it's clear it's saying that we're interpreting this as uh, to apply to soil eroding from areas undergoing development that are non-agricultural. It's feasible and I basically insert a paragraph or insert a sentence specifically stating that home gardens would not be applicable to this ordinance? Is that something that couldn't be done? Is it a possibility? I, I understand the non-agricultural statement that you made, and I, and I would agree interpretation is important, but I think uh, the homeowner and the, and the residents need to understand that we are not trying to regulate gardens, A. And I think the other part they need to understand is basically we're trying to come into compliance with the EPA who's kind of holding a gun to our head over there. Um, Mr. Bowen? So, uh, if you would uh, refer to the new schedule of um, fees under 8.5304, um, that would sort of sum up, as uh, Tim mentioned, that we have added two new um, categories. Um, we have put the 100 square feet or less in there um, just as a placeholder. We will not be requiring any kind of um, um, input back from the homeowner um, doing any project 100 square feet or less. And so those are listed as zero dollar permits just as a placeholder. Um, and we have changed in, um, any permit from 100 to 1,500 square feet to um, essentially a $25 permit for the, 20, or for the three months. What we're asking for homeowners who have disturbed um, 100 square feet to 1,500 square feet, um, we're not asking for a permit, we're not asking for um, fees and, uh, or you know, uh, a, an elaborate plan or anything like that. Um, the certification statement is um, basically getting some sign off from the homeowner that um, they understand what our ordinance reads and what the requirements are. Um, the, the EPA does not um, distingu distinguish between types of job sites, um, whether it's a garden or someone you know, rototilling their entire yard. Um, they look at disturbed area, um, and that's it. Is there a um, possibility of soil leaving that site? Um, and so we're looking to um, do this certification statement so that we can get some buy-off from the homeowner that they understand what the requirements are and we can have a chance to make sure that they've looked at a document like the homeowner's guide um, so they can responsibly do that work um, in their yard. 
and for any job site 1,500 square feet or larger, that's when we would have um, the other requirements take into place where you would have to come up with a, um, a more elaborate plan and a sketch and um, you know the permit forms and all of that. Um, so we're looking to um, just get that certification statement from anyone under 1,500 square feet, and that's where we've really raised that threshold from 400 square feet to 1,500. Again, I, I apologize. If I'm listening to you correctly, you're saying that if I'm putting a garden in my backyard, 25 by 50, which isn't a very large garden, I will or will not have to pay the $25. I will or will not have to uh, file a plan with the village. Under, under these requirements as written, um, it's disturbed area, and they would have to come in for a, um, a permit for that. If I can clarify, that's a $25 permit, and then sign the certification. For the they have to sign the certification. They don't have to sign the plan. No, but we would, we would also um, send an inspector out to make sure that that, um, um, that disturbed area has been done in accordance with what they said that they were going to do. And, and if I might, again, and, and in, in support of the rule, we need a rule. If somebody does a 25 by 15 or a 20 by 20 garden, and we exempt that somehow under our ordinance, and they place it in their yard in such a way that on a heavy rain, the soil is, travels to the curb and travels down the curb and into the storm sewer, and IEPA's in town doing an audit, and they see that, they're going to come after us and say we're violating, we, didn't, we don't have proper rules in place, we're not doing proper inspection. How did we let that guy get away with it? So we have to, I mean, we have to balance, you know, how we deal with this. I understand that, right. but I, we also have hundreds of gardens in this village right well, now. And, and I think, the, as Tim has said, our intent is not to go out and seek out garden, garden, right? But if the EPA would say that's disturbed soil that could, in a heavy rain, if there's any sort of a slope, travel through the yard, end up on the curb, and travel into the storm sewer, and that would be something they would want us to confirm with the property owner new best practices how to prevent that. It's tough. Thank you, Your Honor. Would not the EPA have to ask you for your ordinance and look at your ordinance and see what your footage is? I mean, the EPA so just can't drive down the street and say you're in violation. If they have no set numbers, we're the ones that's setting the numbers, so we're the guys that's putting the number on there. But the EPA is, is more interested in what are we, are we controlling. Yes, we are. We are controlling it because we have guidelines that we set forth. If you don't agree with those guidelines, then you need to address us with that, and then we can address that. But to me, 100 square foot is, and I don't, I don't want to use the word again, it, it's, it's not acceptable. With the certification, what if the homeowner doesn't agree with the what are the penalties of this? They the same if they fail to do the plan under the higher square footage? Um, I don't know the answer to that offhand. I'd have to look into um, you know what the requirements are. Um, my understanding um, is in Chapter Eight, uh, Public Works Chapter, there is a section regarding failure to obtain a permit from the Public Works Department, and there is uh, language involving that. Um, but I can look back into that and uh, get back to you with that. Myself, personally, I'd like to make a motion to see if we could hold this over. I'm not comfortable on voting on this tonight like this. You're throwing a motion out on the floor to table this. To table this. To until for is next meeting sufficient? We can have all of our information. We do. So you you have a motion to table. I'm going to second that motion to table. Any discussion on the motion? Any discussion on the motion to table? 
There's no, there's no discussion on it. It's not debatable. It's not debatable. It's not debatable motion. <laughs> okay. Ordinance 36 does attach foil. The motion has been made. I need a second. Two table. I, I, I second. Just yes. The motion has been made to table those till what? September 17th. Is that correct? Correct. Well, clerk, please take the roll. Trustee Johnson? Aye. Gentry? Aye. Go. Aye. Beck? Aye. Bolin? Aye. Tamman? Aye. Six ayes, no nays. Ordinance 36 12 will be held over till the September 17th meeting. Uh, Ordinance 37 12 will then Chapter 8, Public Works, first reading, Trustee Tamman. I would like to present ordinance number 37-12 for first reading. This is an ordinance of the Village of Machesney Park amending Village Ordinance Chapter 8, Article 14, um, that prohibits connection of sanitary or industrial waste sewers to stormwater drainage systems. <coughs> and again, Colin spoke earlier about this and answered some of the questions we had at the committee level. Second. What you made, motion second. Is there any discussion? Will the clerk please take the roll? Trustee Beck? Aye. Bolin? Aye. Tamman? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Gentry? Aye. Yo? Aye. Six ayes and no nays. Ordinance 37-12 has been adopted for the first reading. Resolution 62-R-12, purchase two squad cars. Trustee Beck. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, resolution 62-R-12 is a agreement, intermental inter <coughs> governmental agreement with the county sheriff's department to uh, uh, purchase two squad cars. Uh, the original, uh, basically the original uh, said it was uh, not to exceed $44,000, so, you know, we need to go back in and uh, correct this. And basically, where any time you spend over $20,000, uh, the corporate authority is required to have a uh, uh, a two-thirds vote for, for the bidding process. And by it, basically it says, now therefore be resolved the President of the Board of <coughs> Trustees of the Village of Chelsea Park, Winnebago County, only that by adoption of this resolution, the corporate authorities waive the formal bid process under the Village Code, Section 18.403, and authorize the Village Administrator to procure two squad cars from Landmark Ford not to exceed $50,000. Second. Motion made, motion second. Is there any discussion? Will the clerk please take the roll? Trustee Bowen. Aye. Tannen. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Gentry. Aye. Yo. Aye. Beck. Aye. Mayor Strickland. Aye. Seven ayes and no nays. Resolution 62-R-12 has been adopted. Resolution 66-R-12. Release executive session minutes, Resolution 66R12 uh, is a uh, resolution uh, where the uh, village trustees went into closed sessions to determine which uh, uh, closed session meetings uh, were appropriate to be released for general public. And basically, basically I'm going to read it from here out. Whereas the village of, <coughs> and the village attorney met in closed session on August 20th, 12, reviewed all closed session minutes, determined if any of the minutes or portions thereof could be made public, 